But we are getting started right. here. We got Kenteco. Kentico? Kentico. Going with Kentico versus Twisted Duck. I'm excited. Heading here into Cap Kingdom. Everyone's favorite kingdom. Excited to see Kentico's beautiful face during this run. Oh yeah, definitely love to have the face cam on. Not a lot of runners so far in the B tournament, tournament opting for the face cam. I mean, it's it can be a bit of a mental uh, thing for some runners. I know a lot of runners don't use face cam really at all. So, I mean, if you don't use face cam during your regular runs, kind of hard to expect uh, runners to turn on their webcam for races. It does give that nice extra bit of information for the audience. Those reactions, a live feed. For sure, for sure. Clean movement so far from both runners. Yep, I mean, when you get down to this sort of PB range, you got a 103, you got a 101. You're going to have some clean movement. You're going to have very, you know, concise, deliberate movements. See Twisted Duck rolling there on the railing for just a slight bit of time save there. Very risky, though. I mean, especially if you're like a... Ooh, we're getting the water roll. All right, Twisty Duck. Coming out swinging Ooh. right now. Kenteko missing the frog, accidentally pausing on the menu. Hate to see that. Yeah, I mean, it happens. You get over eager, you want to get rid of those cutscenes ASAP. Right. Can't blame him. Wuxu claiming to hate their face in the chat room, even though he is the only one in the tournament that submitted a face profile picture. So questionable there. Kentiko having a little bit of troubles with that left side, but with a nice backup there, keeping things calm and collected here in Cat Kingdom. Even if it's a little bit, you know, a little bit of a blow here or there. All right, Twisted Duck leaving Cap. Kenteko right behind him. It's not you. <laughs> Submitting other people's face for his profile picture. That's an interesting, interesting decision. Probably questionable in legality, but I mean, okay. <laughs> Runner confirms identity theft. Is that a uh, grounds for disqualification? I think uh, we need uh, some referees on that real quick. Oh man, yeah, let's, let's have no more disqualifications. <laughs> let's have nice, clean races. <laughs> Heading into Cascade here. You know, I, I love that. Uh, I mean, a lot of people hate on like the early kingdoms, but I mean, just the the vibes in these kingdoms, especially from the casual perspective, like that that intro and cap when you like. Exit on the wire and the logo pops up with the music. It's, it's, it's aesthetic. It's it does, yeah. Cascade's honestly one of those just really nice and nostalgic kingdoms. And I feel like it's just one of those kingdoms you remember from your first playthrough. And it just kind of sticks with you. Oh, is Duck going for... Oh. He had me thinking for a second. I, I, I wasn't quite looking. What was Duck doing? I saw him jump diving into the water, which is definitely not a strat. Um. <laughs> he, he moved his camera backwards. I uh, assumed he was maybe uh, going for the cheeky DSS, but uh, maybe, debating me. Maybe thinking about it. I mean, it could be Duck just trying to debate the commentators. It's very possible. Yeah. Damn it, calling the DSS troll in chat. Ooh, and Kenteko missing Dino Skip. You know, the hitbox on that trampoline is not very forgiving, I tell you what. Yeah. Interesting options. For, interesting options for that backup there. A lot of times you'll see runners kind of walk into the wall to uh, kind of set up the leg cycles, I guess you could say. Like, uh, So you, you want to have the left foot obviously placing down on the trampoline, so you'll wait until like the right foot is down and turn up. Uh, or, like going down, but... Often you just kind of go slow there. Very interesting setup there for the backup, but it does make it, which is good. And sometimes you gotta go slow to go fast. Yeah, it's not entirely out of the question where runners will just completely mess up Dino Skip multiple times in a row and just pretty much lose the race in Cascade. So it's good to see at least, you know, having a backup there. If you don't get it first try, you gotta have a backup. 50% of speed running right there. Right you are. We see both these runners wrapping up Cascade. 
still pretty close behind, even though we had some mistakes from Kinteko, but still not too far behind. Yeah, definitely well within the margin of error. I mean, we saw in the last match just how things can turn around at any point in the run. Even when you're all the way in the escape sequence, no runner is safe from a 2D death. No runner is safe from a death in pillars. It happens. Definitely. Yeah, and definitely shout out to the last race. Both amazing, amazing runners. Definitely performing to the top of their abilities. What a, what a, what a good show. Yeah, it's kind of interesting sometimes. Like, sometimes you have tight races like that where it's like, the entire time, uh, players are neck and neck. You never know what's going to happen. The lead's shifting all the time. And then other times, we'll have races where it looks like it's all over. And chat's calling GG 10 minutes in. And, you know, there's just big discrepancies in the time throughout the run. And then all of a sudden, there's a big death. And then, uh, you know, it's all tied up. Kind of crazy how that happens. Super Mario Odyssey speedrunning. It's never over till it's over. Too true. Too true. All right, we see Duck entering into Sand Kingdom. Yeah. Twisted Duck saying that he's fairly nervous in chat, but does not look like he's playing with nerves. So far, he's fairly pretty pretty clean. Yeah, Duck is a solid runner, so I mean, even with a little bit of tournament nerves, I think that we'll see Duck do pretty well, and a lot of times in these tournament matches, you'll see runners, you know, maybe have a bit of nerves, they may make some bonks here early on in Sand Kingdom, uh, but then, you know, you kind of get the first two kingdoms, the first two stages down in any speed game, and you kind of start to get, you know, not necessarily used to it, but the nerves just kind of float away a lot of the times, you kind of start controlling them, um, but tournament yeah. nerves, they don't really go away for most people. Right, and I feel like we might be seeing a little bit of tournament nerves from Kinteko as he's bonks going up to Bird and unfortunately missing Bird altogether and having some issues getting into pipe. Yeah. You saw his face cam, him shaking it off, but uh, I feel like, you know, give him a couple minutes, we'll kill catch up. Yeah, absolutely. Grab that employee's only moon sneaking back there. You know, theft is okay in the Mario world. That is totally fine. We just go around, we take things from people. Um, that's totally fine. Yeah, no big deal. I feel like when you can capture anyone's identity with a hat, no one's going to question it. <laughs> Definitely some moral see... questions with the uh, the captures in this game. Absolutely. I want to see Dramstrat from Duck here. Perfect execution there. Love to see it. Kentucko having no problem getting up on that ice pillar. Oh no. Kentucko really having some trouble here in these early kingdoms. I hope that we can get these nerves dialed down. Definitely. I mean, with a 103-49, definitely has these movements down, but we're not really able to chain anything together so far, unfortunately, and I'm really hoping that we can kind of get things under control. Hope so, but that was a really clean backup. I've never seen anyone actually climb the wall like that, so that was, that was really cool to see from Kinteko. Yeah, might need to might need to see some some energy sends in the chat. Might need to see some some poggers or our gamer Kentico in the chat. I know that we have some Kentico supporters rolling in here. I've seen some first time chatters, seen some hype. I've seen some languages that I don't understand. So, uh, if you have some cheers for our gamer Kentico, please share some energy because we need it right now. Absolutely, let's show your support, man. Absolutely. Meanwhile, we have Duck just wrapping up sand. All in all, pretty clean from Duck. Yeah, the chat's saying. 
absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. The chat spirit bomb worked so well last <laughs> race. Like, I kind of feel bad for starting it because the tournament organizer probably shouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, summoning the power of the known world uh, down on Shadow Gatto, but. I mean, it works. That's that's just the proof right there. If you never believed in the chat spam, I mean, that's all the superstition you should need. Absolutely, absolutely. That and commentator curse. So we got Duck rolling out of sand here, but not too far behind. We got Kentiko wrapping up the Notes Moon here. Should be heading back to the Odyssey now. So a couple of cutscenes here and a little bit of menuing, but not too big of a lead here so far for Twisty Duck. Needs to keep his wits about him if he wants to maintain this lead, but a fairly sizable one at this point. Definitely. I feel like Odyssey is one of those games where as soon as you get, in the, I mean, this is this is for me at least, as soon as you get out of the sand, like the nerves are pretty much gone. You're in the race. You have a run going. You know, from there it should just be just smooth sailing, but we'll see what happens with Conteco here. See if he can uh, get these nerves a little shaken away. We got Duck zipping on through Late Kingdom here. Gonna be grabbing this moon here. I'm expecting a late clip out of Duck. We'll see if that comes to fruition here. Looks like we will be maintaining our position in the corner. Not able to get the clip, unfortunately. We'll see how many times we go for this. Okay. All right, not bad. Very Second nice. try. Um, you know, not necessarily saving the most time here. Obviously, having set it up a couple times doesn't really help the time save. But, does get it. So, I mean, gotta respect going for it in a race. It's not an easy strat in Kentiko. Falling down here, unable to grab the zipper. See if we can get the backup strat here. Nice known backup here. That's one move, man. Yeah, that's one of the things we were talking about earlier is... You know, you might make these mistakes, but if you have the backups, you have the game knowledge, you can kind of mitigate the disasters not lose as much time as you might have before. And we see uh, you're sitting with a few less moons, like three less moons than Duck right now. And going for a much easier route, so not going to be, you know, making the flubs on late clip. Because, uh, you know, not going for it. I feel like if you're Kinteko, you know you're a little bit behind. Late clip might be a little, a little too dangerous to take. So going with the safe strats might be a little quicker. I can't say I've seen these, uh, this route from Twisted Duck. This is new. Yeah, this is a late clip route. Um, pretty much the most high level movement you can do in this kingdom. You can actually talk to that NPC through the wall there, but uh, other than that, pretty much going for all the fast strats here in like pretty short kingdom, but definitely a good one. Lots of people uh, have Lake as one of their favorite kingdoms, and there's good reason for that. Kinteko getting bodied by Topper over here. Topper, no. Shadow have the crack man. I forget these bosses' names sometimes. <laughs> Just a comment on what's happening in the chat. Um, betting against yourself, probably not the best practice to do in general. I feel like for channel points, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you're going to throw an entire tournament for channel points, uh, be my guest. But generally, yes, that would be considered bad mannered and oftentimes illegal. Um, but yeah, channel point predictions not the not the most serious event in the world. Are we let Duck get away with it? Duck's gonna throw the race just to win the prediction. Yeah, win win the channel points that you can use to uh, unlock emojis and highlight messages. I mean, that that's that's a pretty good reward. Absolutely. Absolutely. I must, I must say. All right, we got Kinteko leaving Lake Kingdom. Still just behind Twisted Duck. With the mistakes he's made, he had a little little issue with Rango, but he's still... He's bringing up the rear, but he's not too far behind. In the rear with the gear, bringing home the Mario moves. We gotta see something happen in Wooded here for Kinteko. We can't keep slipping behind. Uh, we need to either, you know, save some time over Duck or just break even here. Don't need to lose any more time. Definitely. 
I feel like Kinteko just needs a little more energy from chat. Well, let's get some love and support for Kinteko. And Duck. Duck's definitely came definitely came to show up. He's definitely playing. Both of these guys are definitely gaming tonight. Yeah, Duck definitely gaming. Getting that nut clip very clean so far. We'll see how the movement is. Very nice. Out of bounds movement. Solid. No stuttering. Twisted Duck is pretty much gaming. I mean, Duck has said many times in the past, has the goal of getting a sub hour and showing it here today that he has got the moves. Oh, just as I say Oh, it. commentator curse! Now that was not uh, part of the plan. That's not part of the plan. Absolutely. Scripted. It's part of the script. Yeah, this is... If So, see, okay, here's where betting against yourself comes into play. So if you win, you win. Obviously winning is good. If you lose, then sure. you can pretend like you were throwing for the channel points, right? Exactly. It's all, it's all mental strategy. All planned out. All right, going for not clip here on the side of Kentiko. Will this work? I think we're fine, and we are out of bounds. So, Kentiko, keeping up with Duck here. A little bit of uh, unsureness in this movement here, out of bounds. But not a huge deal. We have succeeded at nut clip, and as we have discussed before in previous races, it does save a pretty sizable amount of time in this nut clip route. Duck completely skipping the piranha, not giving it the time of day. Yeah, we don't want solid to, playing movement. We don't want to watch cutscenes as speedrunners. We want to just you know try to do a bunch of crazy, insane movement instead. It's much much more comforting, much more uh, speedy. Absolutely. I think if speedrunners had their way, they would just have no cutscenes. It would just be high octane gameplay, 24/7, and everyone's hands would just fall off. Yeah, oh I'll tell you what. Oh. I mean, you can see it in Kinteko's face. You know he is not enjoying his performance. Yep. Yep. Not, I'm not sure how familiar uh, Kinteko is with tournaments. I, I've watched and or been a part of the uh, production side of a lot of Super Mario Odyssey tournaments, any percent and otherwise, and I've not seen Kintiko much in the tournament scene, if at all, so could be a little bit of first tournament nerves here, perhaps? But taking the death here and voided and not grabbing the checkpoint is going to be a major time loss, and this is what we were trying to avoid, as I was saying before, is falling further behind here and voided, but now we're here. Um, no time for that consideration now. Absolutely. Nice solid backup movement here. Meanwhile, Duck is just zooming through the sewer. Oh yeah, that was a nice fuzzies room there. Unless I was looking away during some catastrophic meltdown, but it looked like a good cycle from what I saw. So good job on Duck for keeping things together here. I mean, saying he was nervous earlier. I like that from Kentiko. I mean, not getting the uh, checkpoint earlier is a bit of a missed opportunity, perhaps. Um, definitely a safe tournament strap, but at least having the, you know, the mental wherewithal and, you know, swallowing your pride a little bit, grabbing that checkpoint. There's some runners out there that won't grab a checkpoint whatsoever, like, no matter what. Like, I don't do this in run, so I'm not going to do it in a tournament. And they'll just run by the checkpoint right. three times and die. And suddenly you've lost a minute and a half in wooded, and the race is over. So, that's fine. Uh, Kentiko, staying in this one. Definitely, definitely. And I gotta agree with Duck and Chat there. Definitely always grab the checkpoints, especially in your, if you're in a race. You know, you might be a really, really good runner, but, you know, one hiccup, that's all it takes. Yep, we are headed into the Nimbus Arena here. Duck with some fancy pants movement, barely <laughs> grabbing that ledge there. We are going to be doing some fast hats. We'll see how they go for Duck. Fast hat down. A few more to go. Looks like Kentiko also going for the Spiritless route here, so very nice to see. I 
that's another nice thing to, uh, you know, keep in mind too. I mean, we, we've seen Kentico make quite a few mistakes, but Kentico's not going for the easy strats here. Kentico's trying to ball out. Kentico's going for the hard stuff, going for Night Clip, we're going for Spewartless. This isn't, you know, a day in the park Super Mario Odyssey. This is like playing on hard mode, basically. Absolutely. He came to play, and he's in fact playing. Yeah, the buttons are being pressed. There are Absolutely. two joysticks. A nice fuzzy room. Cleanly. Absolutely. And Duck cleanly finishing up Cloud going into Lost. I love Lost Kingdom. Such a good one. Very, very pretty aesthetically. Lots of fun movement. The only complaint I have about Lost Kingdom is it has a fantastic soundtrack. Super good soundtrack. I mean, most of the levels in this game have a fantastic soundtrack, but Lost in particular, one of my favorites, and you do not get to hear it in any percent at all. Yeah, it is a, a big shame. But Lost is definitely one of those levels that I never get bored watching. I could just watch it over and over. Even like, like I'll, I'll sub 130 runners, wink, wink, uh, are fun to watch when it comes to Lost. <laughs> yeah, Lip Potato 57 definitely fun to watch. Uh, <laughs> definitely type exclamation point comms in the chat if you'd like to follow Lip Potato on social media, being the Twitch link. Um, also type in SMH Point Racers if you ever want to see who's racing in these tournament events and any sort of showcase we might do. Always try to throw their Twitch girls out there. Because without the racers, without the commentators, uh, these tournaments don't happen. So much, much appreciation Yo, for the gamers. And we also get a special shout out to Saren who put, for putting all this together. Let's be honest, if it wasn't for you, we might not have all this. So definitely class to you. Do appreciate the shout out, but at the end of the day, even if GSA doesn't put on these tournaments, I mean, we saw you know about a year and a half, two years where there was no GSA SMO tournaments, and the, the community put on like at least five or six uh, tournaments of their own. So SMO uh, community is definitely not you know not a slouch when it comes to organizing events. Definitely, you'd love to see that. Duck has been just zooming through Lost. I looked away for a second, and he's already done. Well done. And Kinteko's quickly behind. Wrapping up Cloud Kingdom, we'll be seeing his Lost. Hopefully able to clutch out some clean movement. No mistakes. Yep. I think we'll see... You know, I've been kind of predicting this for a while now, but I think Kinteko's going to try to find some sort of stride here. You know, try to get into some sort of form. Hopefully here in Lost Kingdom. Hopefully I didn't just curse Meme Tree, but... If we can see Contico pull things together and get, you know, the movement in line, get the, you know, box under control. Um, you know, not to curse Duck or anything, but I do know Duck is... Maybe this has changed in recent times, but I know in races, a lot of times Duck will make a mistake and then kind of get into his own head. And, you know, it's easy to do as a tournament racer. You know, make some mistakes and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like a catastrophic chain reaction. And you just can't keep things under control, so... I don't know. We'll see. Will Duck play perfectly and not give Kentiko a chance, or will Duck be able to get some sort of opening from Kentiko? It's all kind of in Duck's court right now. Absolutely. So far, Lost, or Kentiko's Lost Kingdom, is looking pretty clean. Good night, Sack. Alright, now we have Duck entering the... What is this? Courthouse? Uh, it is called City Hall, aka City, City Hall. Hall. Depending on how you uh, perform in it on any given day. Nailing that big old jump. Teko taking that death, but that's okay. I'll we'll put him right next to the Odyssey and head on over to Night Metro. Yep. Speaking of Night Metro, Duck already here in the Wiggler fight. Some nice beginning shots here on the first cycle of the Wiggler. Love to see that. Hopefully, we'll see a nice clean two cycle from him.
trying to think of any major like flaws in Duck's gameplay so far. I feel like most of it has been pretty pretty clean. I mean, the only thing I'm really thinking about is that 2DSS thing, but it seems like potentially just an intentional troll. I don't know. Yeah, maybe just uh, thinking about going, but uh, second guessing himself. But so far, I think I don't Ooh. think he's made many mistakes. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, well, it spoke a little too soon. Wiggler wrapping up on himself a little bit, but getting pretty lucky, in my opinion, on those connections. Sometimes when Wiggler, you know, is curling over himself like that, it can be a bit of a bop trying to get the balls to connect, the little explodey. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them, but balls. Um, they're definitely not bullets. Rockets? I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> can be a bit tricky, the hitboxes are a bit wonky, but manages to get it. Nice Goomba Darn from Contico there. Something we haven't talked about at all in this uh, race as we see Contico entering City Hall here is uh, Duck is actually the first seed in this tournament, so even if Contico isn't able to pull this one back, I mean definitely trying to bat a bit above average here. First seed going up against the 17th seed in the tournament. So. Hats off to Contigo for showing up today and giving it his all, regardless of the outcome here. Absolutely. You mean you gotta imagine that's gonna add to the stress as well, knowing that, you know, Duck is the first seed. Yeah, for sure. Duck just barely squeezing into the beat turn of it. I know, I know if I was Duck, I'd be the kind of person that'd be like, oh, please let me into the A tournament, like, I'm gonna try to PB by two seconds to, you know, try to shave off that extra time I need to get into the A-Turbo. But Duck was, like, in the Discord, like, please, someone, like, don't drop out of the A-Turbo. I want, I want to be in the top seed of the B-Turbo. So, Duck, why are you to pick on the, uh, the lower-ranking players a little bit? I'm not sure how to feel about that one, but, I uh, did manage to snag that number one seed spot. We saw some trouble with Duck getting the, uh, the RC Moon. Had some issues clipping through that with the scooter, but was able to save it. Meanwhile, I have Conteco wrapping up here on Wiggler, hopefully soon. Yeah, not too big of a surprise on the Scoot Clip. Scoot Clip's one of those tricks where it's like, you can see like the best runner in the world just kind of like roll around in circles and just have a complete colossal meltdown on Scoot Clip. Like, 90% of the time in this game, actually probably more like 98% of the time in this game, you're rolling around as Mario, you're jumping, you're doing flips. Um, driving on a scooter is kind of completely different than that. And a lot of runners will actually like turn the controller upside down over their head, pretty much, in order to do scoot clips, so it's a bit of a weird oh, trick. No. Definitely not organic Mario movement. But see Duck here going for the early musician's route, so safe, consistent route, but also, you know, the optimal version of it. So keeping things uh, pretty basic here in Metro, but also, you know, gotta respect it. Um, bullet building is not the hardest I hear, but it is um, quite a bit more. I mean, it's a bunch of movement. You're tacking on a bunch of movement, potential to bonk and die and fall into a pit. Whereas, you know, with the musician, musician's route, you're like, capturing a wire and talking to an NPC. Like, it's pretty much the polar opposite in terms of collecting moons. Absolutely. I believe we saw Gato last race doing bullet room, correct? E maybe. At least so. Maybe. I watch so many of these races, I literally, like, I, I half the time my brain just, like, classifies everything together. Cannot confirm nor deny. I think I tallied it up and there was something like, there's like just under 200 races in the A and B tournament combined over the next Ooh. month or so. Ooh, duck. Having some issues collecting this moon. Wanting to take a dip before collecting the moon. Deciding to take two dips in the pool. Cooling off a little bit from all this hot gameplay. <laughs> yeah, Mario's feet start to get a little bit smoky. You gotta, you gotta, you know, Wash them off every couple of every couple of hours. Absolutely. Not getting that done apparently in the pregame. Understandable. Sometimes you forget. Oh, 
But yeah, like I was saying, we've got a lot of Super Mario and E% percent action coming up. If you like Super Mario Odyssey, you want to watch some epic tournament races, definitely smack that follow button if you haven't already. Really appreciate it. Also want to give a quick shout out to the Urban Arts Partnership, who is making the prize pool for this event happen. Um, you know, we have a lot of Mario coming up, and literally could not fund any of it if it weren't for the Urban Arts Partnership, and they're doing a great job sending a lot of underprivileged students who wouldn't otherwise be able to get into college uh, to school, specifically for game design, which is honestly really cool, very specific to our interests here at GSA, and you know, some of those kids might go on to make some more games, maybe even Super Mario Odyssey 2, if it ever exists. Absolutely, and you gotta love the fact that they are also a, a non-profit organization, so super huge shout out to UAP there. Very true. Alright, Duck wrapping up Metro here, gonna be exiting out of the stage as Kentiko has a few more moons to collect here, gonna have to finish up his musician's route. But, not a huge deal. Yeah, the gap definitely widening between Duck and Kenteko, but I believe, I believe in Kenteko. I think, I think I Metro's want... been pretty even for both of them. Unless yeah. I missed anything like super catastrophic on Kenteko's side. Um, compared to the other kingdoms, Kenteko's really holding his own here. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, totally works. That's definitely a huge thing in uh, tournaments. Like, obviously, you know, you can learn a lot just from watching streams, especially of high-level players. But especially with so many players of different, um, you know, skill levels in tournaments, you see a lot of different strategies. And a lot of times, at least for me, you know, I'm paying attention a lot more to each individual run rather than, you know, a reset attempt stream where it can end at any point in time, like 90% of the time unless the runner's on pace, you're kind of just there chatting with the streamer, more or less. Absolutely. Honestly, if you're looking to get into speedrunning, that's one of the things I would suggest is watching a speedrun of your game. Not necessarily like a live stream, but like a tournament setting or a GDQ setting. You know, you'll learn a lot more in that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's how I, I learn every single speedrun I ever attempt, is I just watch PB attempts. Um, if there's anything really specific, Duck having a little bit of shit there to Blowy Joey, but managing to get away from it. I was a little bit scary, the poison jam, a bit threatening there, but uh, as I was saying, you know, personally for me, I'm a visual learner. I know some people will learn speedruns better from visual, like, guides, more like reading material, but for me at least, sitting down just watching it a reset, Trying to memorize the route is the best for me. You know, uh, from chat, looks like Kenteko actually golded Day Metro. So Pogs in chat, absolutely for Kenteko's gold. We'd love to see it. Snow's been a little rough for Duck. <laughs> Minor, minor issues here and there, but perhaps... Oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness. Dancing around these Goombas. <laughs> Alright, Doug, just calm down. Duck taking the Goombas vectoring a little bit too seriously there. Does save time, but I mean, okay. Those tournament nerves might be catching up to him. You know, he was saying his hands are sweaty. Maybe too many dips inside the pool. Yeah, one thing I can't say from Kentiko right now. Okay, so Kentiko's behind. Kentiko's had a rough early game. And like I've been saying, Katika just needs to kind of keep things under control, maintain composure. And we see him over there laughing a lot, you know, kind of taking it, taking it easy, not super serious. And I think that's kind of the best you can be in this situation because you know that in this position, you know, no amount of like God gamer gameplay, unless you start playing like Tyrone, is going to be uh, bringing you back from this one. You're going to have to rely on Duck to make some mistakes. So don't go like super hyper ultra serious and pretend like your life relies on it because. Um, at the end of the day, if you don't end up winning, your opponent doesn't end up making those mistakes. Um, it's really easy to be too hard on yourself, and it's just good to see runners, you know, treating it like a fun time and not treating it like uh, their day job. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. 
deck duck setting up for dra snow drain. Nailing it. Man, that is it for Snow Kingdom for Duck. Heading over to Seaside. With Kinteko hot on his trail still. You know, I feel like some of those nerves Kinteko might have started to work off, especially with that clean metro. We'll see if he's able to capitalize on some of these minor mistakes that Duck's making. Yeah, Kentico definitely still in it to win it here. Not going to be given up anytime soon. That's something you like to see. Um, anything can happen. It's a race. The age old saying. It's never over Absolutely. till it's over. You see a lot of racers, especially younger racers, they'll get into the race and they're super pumped up. They're super fired up. They're ready to game. And then all of a sudden they make one mistake and they decide it's over and they start going for crazy stuff they don't know how to do. And... Uh, most of the time, that's not that big of a deal. But if your if your opponent ends up making mistakes that are so big that you could come back, I mean, that's yeah, not can't be the best feeling. Yeah, definitely not. Throw the run in like Sand Kingdom or Wooded Kingdom, just trying to do some crazy strat over and over again, and then all of a sudden your opponent dies on 2D skip and falls off mech three times. Like that's a bit of a missed opportunity. Alright, we're about to see a Snow Duran from Kinteko. See if he's able to pull it off first try like Duck was. Meanwhile, yeah. Duck is pretty pretty solid in Seaside. I don't know, okay. Ooh, a little shaky. Definitely had the distance, the angle might have been a little bit deceiving. I'm not a trick jumper, please do not at me. But nice first try to snow drain from Kentiko. Wasn't too surprised to see a solid one out of Duck. I mean, Duck is a notable trick jumper. So, not too surprised there, but definitely nice to see out of Kentiko answering back and keeping this one close. Yeah, it looks like he golded snow as well. So, two Ooh. golds in a row. He is definitely gaming. That's actually nuts. Yeah, can we get some pogs in chat for Kenteko for two golds in a row? Definitely, definitely keeping that stride going. Definitely picking up the pace here. Can't quite see comparisons here. Uh, I don't think we have the. I don't think we have the plugin enabled for Kenteko, and no comparison on the splits on the stream, but. Definitely catching up here in the later kingdoms, which is something you like to see. I mean, it's it's definitely hard to come back from that sort of early game mistakes, but Kentico definitely keeping it together. I mean, you don't just get two golds with a 103.49 PB, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, just giving it, you know, a half effort. Absolutely. And we have confirmation in chat that Twisted Duck is indeed going to throw. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, Duck wrapping up Seaside, heading into luncheon. As the tournament organizer, I must say, please do not make me have to deal with any sort of channel point match fixing drama. That would be the most petty thing I've ever had to moderate in my entire life. Please do not make that a problem. I don't think it's going to be, but God, please don't make that a problem that I have to deal with. <laughs> I'm seeing some da some Contigo doubters in the chat. Apparently, they weren't watching the last match. Definitely not. No, Contigo can still absolutely bring this back. The race is far from over. Duck could make some silly mistakes, or Contigo could just play out of his mind. The race is definitely not over.
Yeah, I don't, I don't have the, the uh, stats written down or anything, but I mean, the last race, I think it was at least a minute lead that was lost in uh, Moon Kingdom. Maybe a minute and a half. It was a pretty fat lead. Definitely was. Duck finishing up Spirit. Yahoo! While Conteco is finishing up C. <laughs> Conteco not getting 18 golds in a row. Very sad to see. Not literally golding every split. Might have to agree with the chat. It might be over. I mean, don't play literally perfectly every single split. I mean... You hate to see it, honestly. I came to this tournament expecting to see nothing but gold, so... Is, is that I don't a know. typical run? You just don't mess up at all? Yeah. Just literally be a task, and you will win every race. Easy. Duck coming in with some spicy movement. Yeah, we got, got the saving save. that. Yeah. Oh. Impressing himself, it looks like. <laughs> well, there's there's two things. So, if someone saves a clip on their Switch during a tournament race, either they're very impressed with themselves, or they're very confused with themselves. And there's no in between. There's no like, oh, I guess I'll save that. It's always like, oh man, I need to save that. Or, what was that? <laughs> like, command is wrong. I keep pointing that out. Next, you chat for helping me out. All right, Conteco getting in the spirit, and Duck about to go into the second sub area of luncheon. Yeah, we saw last race. Forks can be a major time loss. I mean, you can get all the way to the end of this room and fall all the way down and die. Um, wow, very nice forks moving here from Duck so far. That was about as cleanly as you can do forks. That was very impressive. Having some issues getting up on top. Managing to get it a second try. You mentioned before Duck is a trick jumper, and honestly, you really you can really see that. The, the, the jump over there that he just got, not that easy. Yeah, realistically, as you Mario Odyssey, any jump you're doing in a speedrun is probably not going to be easy. I mean, pretty much every single movement in this game is deliberate and optimized. <laughs> what are you doing, Duck? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a rage pause? I'm not even sure. Ah, he's starting to throw. SMO is incredibly fun. I was I was a big SMO denier. I talk about it a lot. Used to be a SM64 fanboy. Still love SM64, but SMO has grown on me hugely ever since I got a Switch, got the game. Uh, I realized this game is fantastic. The movement is spectacular. Uh, there's a lot of cool optim optimized stuff you can do. Skill ceiling is super high, so a lot of fun to play, a lot of fun to watch. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel like any anyone can really run this game. I'm primarily a, an SMS runner. I just dabbled in it this year, really. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun speed run. There's a lot of really nice, safe strats and easy strats for beginners. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in, in terms of games that you can pick up and just do a speedrun of it, of it um, Super Mario Odyssey is definitely high up on the list of things I would suggest to people. Um, really? You know, obviously a lot of people have it. It's a really fun game, but um, not having a lot of, you know, major tricks in it. You know, there's no wrong works. There's no clips to skip levels or anything like that. There's, you know, some optimizations like nut clip and some dram strats and stuff like that where you can save quite a bit of time. Some crazy optimal routing, but 
you know, just to get into the run, do a couple speed runs, and even get down to, you know, like the 130, 120 range, it doesn't take super long. No, not at all. And it's definitely a quick game, you know, not a lot of cutscenes. You know, like SMS, you have like seven minutes of cutscenes right at the beginning that you can't skip. And everything in SMO, you can pretty much skip. So that's nice, too. Yeah, I it, I mean, a lot of people like that. For me, I'm kind of a boomer. I like my cutscenes and speedruns. I run a lot of Ocarina of Time where we got like a three minute intro. You get, to, you know, take a nap, have some comfy time, learn about the lore, watch oh, the visuals. All right, we got Duck leaving luncheon, making his way to Ruined and Kenteko. Pretty, pretty close pine still. I feel like he's still bringing up the rear, but he's definitely making some gains. Yeah, the lead definitely doesn't feel at least as wide as it was. Don't have the head-to-head -head sheet going on, so... Don't really know exactly what's going on, uh, but... I don't know, maybe I'll not rely on that so much in the future. I know, you know, most speedrun tournaments I'm used to not having a stat sheet, so you gotta, like, keep track of the lead in between kingdoms. And generally, I don't do that much anyways, but maybe I'll just keep doing that. Who knows? Oh my goodness. Tantico falling all the way down into the Pepto Abysmal. You hate to see it. You really do, but honestly, that was his first mistake for a good long time. He's been pretty clean up until then. Maybe still some of those tournament nerves in him. Yeah, I think we're mostly over the tournament nerves. Like I was saying before, once you get past the first couple of kingdoms, you can kind of like generally, you know, focus more on the game, get kind of in your groove. You're like, okay, yeah. this is literally just like doing a PB attempt, but I can't reset. I think that's definitely one of the good things that come out of tournaments is, uh, even if people don't generally start doing more resets more, which personally I think is more fun, at least for me, but, uh, at least for, you know, these races, and oftentimes people will do practice in our resets. I think it's really good for people, not only with their gameplay, but also their mentality. Because sometimes people get just stuck in reset hell, and they just reset over and over and over again. They don't get out of cap for an entire day. Um, definitely. An entire week. And forcing yourself to do no resets sometimes is definitely good for your brain, in my opinion. Absolutely, especially when these these higher level runners, you know, the the one of five, the ones, you know, you you get it, like you said, this this reset loop, and it, it's just not good for your your muscle memory or your, your, just your skill in general, you know. Yeah, especially if like you reset cap for weeks, and then all of a sudden you're on PV pace and you're in Bowser's, and you haven't been on a run in Bowser's in two weeks, and yeah, that doesn't work out very well most of the time. Yeah. All right, so we see Duck leaving Ruined while Kaneko, Kenteko, sorry, enters it. Bringing up, bringing up that, uh, that lessening that gap just a little bit. All right, we're seeing the cheers coming out for Kenteko. The power is coming, I believe. The underdog story is just beginning. Absolutely. And no matter who you're rooting for, whether it be Duck or Kenteko, show them some love in chat, give them your energy, show them some support. Yeah, speaking of support, make sure to directly support the racers if you can. Let's make point racers in the chat. I'll go ahead and type it for you. Very important. You'll find that some some racers in these tournaments that join, like, don't even have affiliate yet. And, like, I've literally gone into people's streams that join tournaments that have, like, a 101, and they have, like, 37 followers. And it's like, alright, how do we fix this? <laughs> like, how is this acceptable in today's society? Like, please, please follow these runners. They pour their hearts into the game. They're here to put on a show for us, and put a show on their channel. Uh, some of them daily, so definitely go check them out. Absolutely. Definitely worth their time, too. These are both two great runners. Oh, 
looks like Kenteko's wrapping up Spyro when Duck is moving on to Bowser. Is that that dragon's name, Spyro? That absolutely can. not. I just, no, absolutely not. I think that, that dragon's name should just be Spyro. It's a good name. It's definitely original. I don't think there's any absolutely. dragons named Spyro out there, so... I don't cool. think so. Nothing I've heard of. I mean, I'm I'm pretty big in the you know the dragon community. I don't think I've actually ever heard of a dragon. <laughs> the the dragon era, so. community. I mean, yeah, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe chat can confirm that. You know, <laughs> it's a pretty intimidating community. I don't know if I want to be part of the dragon community. I don't think I'd fit in. <laughs> So Kentiko wrapping up in the Ruined Kingdom here. While Duck is heading up to go meet the bunnies. Fairly close at this point. A couple more moons to snag here. Going for Bowser's Dram. Looks like we should be nailing it here. Very nice moves from our gamer Twisty Duck. Very cool. Yeah, definitely very cool. All these Dram strats definitely found by the runner Dram. Yeah, just a reminder to the chat, please try to keep things mostly in English. You know, some cheers and whatnot is A-OK, -okay, but I cannot moderate French. I do not speak French. I know we had a, a lot of Russian in the chat a couple of weeks ago, and there was some Monka-ass comments being made, so let's just try to keep it in English so we can make sure that chat is a good time for everybody. Ooh, duck having some issues with Topper here. Yeah, we're able to uh, clutch out there, but that was that was a little scary. Yeah, one health is not not the situation you want to be in, but probably gonna get the health refill here. I'd imagine we haven't gotten it yet. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and snag that, and that's why you do not grab that checkpoint until after the first bunnies fight. In case you need that health refill. Yeah, it's a small mistake like this that you know Contecos definitely wanna capitalize on. Not enough to bring him up fully, but something. Ooh, missing the second one, missing the bomb. Yeah, a bit unfortunate there. What do you mean, duck is human? Look at the profile picture. That's literally yeah, that twisted be. duck. He's a duck that's twisted. I mean, what's what's to get confused? Yeah, I need some. Uh, I need some proof on that. That's proof. <laughs> Yeah, Samu, Samu gets it. I was born the rare condition of being twisted as a duck. True. If there's ever a twisted duck face reveal, we need like a Animorph style like duck, duck to uh, twisted duck face. Absolutely. There you go, Drinkable confirming in chat. They have seen the duck's face before. It is something worth men mentioning. We do have a lot of ducks in this tournament. I think we have three ducks in this tournament, which is pretty crazy. We have Twisted Duck, uh, we have Ducky, and then we have, I think Skoosh has a duck profile picture? We have many ducks yeah, I in just, the tournament. I just assumed that was something with the SMO community. Like, the SMS community has a lot of JJs, or just Js in general, so I just kind of assumed that the SMO community just had ducks. Yeah, we, we just... We, I mean, we accept everybody here in the SMO community, so, I mean, ducks are most definitely welcome in the community. We'll have to see it. Throw some bread in the chat for our ducks in the community. Gotta keep them fed. You see Duck headed up here now into the mech fight. And this is one of those parts of the run where things can get dicey. I mean, the best runners in the world that fall off mech from time to time. So we'll see how Duck manages here. Going for the Burbless here. No boards required. Now, got our first hit off. Very nice clean movement so far from Duck on this map. I feel like from now until the end, the run is pretty much any mistake can cost it. Yep. Topper. Duck managing to keep on. Topper taken down, we got Spewart and Harriet left as Kentiko's taken on Topper in a different arena. Fortunately, a little bit far behind here at this point. The 
quite unlikely at this point that we make a patch up move, but duck. Going for the last hit here. Oh, and a bonk! We oh. had fallen off. Okay, there is. we're entering capture mode. And that's what I'm talking about. Mistakes. I mean, we've seen like maybe two or three mistakes, and I think at least two of them have entered the capture mode. On one HP. Yeah, Duck needs to hold it together here. Incredibly oh, scary. No. Oh, and he's missing it. Okay, Duck needs to just wait for the next cycle. I think that's a good call. He needs to get a heart. He is scaring me. Yeah, this mech is pretty quick. It's not that fast when you're rolling around as Mario, but when you're a little borb, it can be go. scary. And going for the heart, that's, see, that's smart, okay? Um, that's what I'm talking about, is when you're in a situation like this and you start making mistakes, if you lose your mental pool, okay, this isn't a good situation. No. Oh, that could have been his death. Definitely oh. a good thing he grabbed that heart. Oh, God, no. Oh. Hey, Kinteko definitely needs to capitalize on this. This is exactly what he needs right now. Yeah, I was just going to compliment a duck on, you know, keeping things together, but able to survive the mech fight, and that is what matters. Maintaining his lead, albeit a little bit shorter of a lead than it used to be. Yeah, uh, making those kind of mistakes definitely increases the nerves, especially in a tournament setting. You know, you, you hate to see it. Yeah, that was that's what I was saying earlier, is that when you start making mistakes, especially later on, it's pretty hard to keep your, your mentality together. Um, Duck, though, I mean, you know, we saw the captures coming out, we saw another fall, but grabbing that heart, definitely a solid choice. Um, not trying to, you know, go crazy and pull off some insane birdless strats to make it back on top. Staying in the bird, grabbing the heart, staying alive. Uh, Duck, still in this one. Definitely still on this one, in the lead as well, but I can take her definitely with a bit of an option here, but no. Having some struggle getting up there. Yeah, and I mean, this is why people say, I mean, the run's never over until you hit, you get mech finished. Um, even after mech, it's, there's a lot of tricky stuff, but... Man, this it's mech so fight for Kentiko is not what we need to back up here, and we are not going for the bird whatsoever. We're going to keep trying this birdless strat. Does end up getting it, but... Here we go. Quite a bit of time loss there, unfortunately. Definitely not an easy thing to do optimally. Heck, it's hard. It's, uh, it's a hard to, thing to do casually, even. Morning yeah. orbs are definitely real. Absolutely. All right, can Kentiko make it back onto the mech here? A little bit low oh. here. The bunny ears are threatening. All right, we have made it. A little Very bit of nice. delay on the cap dive. Very nice stuff. Kentiko wrapping up mech here, but several cutscenes now behind Duck. Quite a bit closer. Duck has to keep it together here in Moon Kingdom if he wants to run away with this victory. Will we see a 2D SS though from Duck? No, we better not. <laughs> we better not see a 2D SS from Duck. Duck, please do not go for 2D SS. He was debating the DSS, I feel, you know, maybe 2D SS. Going for 2D SS would be the biggest throw possible. Like, there's just way too much possibility of completely dying. Definitely just keep things consistent and safe. And that's what we're doing here, going for the standard mood cave skip. Nothing fancy, but very clean, very consistent, rolling up to the cathedral here. Just a Bowser fight and an escape sequence away from victory in this first Group A match. Absolutely. I mean, if I was Duck after that mecha, I would do nothing but save strats, honestly, just to, just to seal out the victory. I think Kinteko wrapping up Bowser's. And the end of the race is coming. Everyone be sure to get your support and chat. Cheer for your, your favorite runner. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I'm staying out of the chat on this one. I don't want to be uh, accused of any sort of tournament ranking. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Ooh, 
one chat energy flood is uh, enough for me for today. Alright, can Tico enter Moon? Ooh, yeah, not clean to start to the Moon Kingdom so far, but we are here. We are rolling up. It's gonna be up to Duck to keep things together here. Oh no, and dying! Oh no! In the final Bowser fight, that is not something you see so frequently in tournament races, but you do spawn right back here at the start of the Cathedral. Not the biggest deal, but now it is a very close match, and honestly, anybody's game, Duck needs to not make any more mistakes if he wants to continue. Uh, you know, walking away with this victory. Oh, you hate seeing Kinteko having some issues with Boomskip here. Oh, it's clean. Alright, there we go. Kinteko can definitely clutch it. If we see any more mistakes like Duck, that could be pretty detrimental to him. Yeah, certainly possible. Still not super likely, but Duck showing some chinks in the armor. Okay. Um, okay, Duck, please just oh, calm duck. down. Duck. Duck almost taking another death. Yeah. Both but... runners in Bowser. Wooks and chat confirming Saren skip. Script, I should say. <laughs> just calling out the community director. Look, okay, I gotta, I gotta get the ratings up, okay? Ratings have been down. We gotta pretend like it's a close match, okay? Don't blame me. Blame the ratings. It's all about the ratings here, GSA, the numbers. They're getting that safety yard. Make it a little more safe for them. Bringing my nerves back down. This is incredibly close though. We are one Bowser cycle apart now. Twisted Duck with a tiny lead. At this point, just having a sloppy 2D section and a sloppy ending is going to, you know, be the difference here. So Duck really has to keep it together at this point. Bowser. Duck heading over to the 2D section. Well, we gonna see the 2D SS? No, please. Come on, Duck. There's Come no, on, Duck. Not only do I uh, not want it to happen, but there is absolutely no way that Duck would even be thinking about going for it. Like, you know no Duck's here to win. Right imagine, imagine asking to be in the B tournament and then somehow falling out of groups. And Duck here with a pretty safe uh, 2D section here. I can't blame him for going for it. It's okay, going for XD. Very interesting. Um, for the safe, no 2D skip, and then going for XD when you could potentially fall at that point, but okay, I I respect it. Duck looking like he's gonna hold it together here. Getting close, but make sure y'all get your favorite jams in chat. I mean, cat jam's the only option. That's some pretty good jams there. Antico going for that 2D skip. A little bit of time save over Duck potentially. Wasn't the cleanest in the world. Also going for XD. Okay. XD gang, apparently. Alright, it looks like Duck may be able to clutch this out. Is that not XD? Need to brush up on my my mean skips. Duck having some issues with this last pillar duck, here. You didn't hit it, man. <laughs> there you go. All right, duck, going to clean this one out. Not getting invisible here at the end of the game. Very nice. Okay, emoji from me, duck. Got to be clutching this final one with a 105. Uh, about 16 or 17. Oh, okay, just gonna 
make me wrong. I think I was wrong anyways. I think the split is also wrong, but like a 1 of 520. Not Duh. bad. Gotta be cleaning Definitely things good. out here. I've got Kinteko wrapping up as well. All in all, a pretty solid run for both of them. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I mean, we had some early game flubs from Kentiko. We had some late game flubs from Twisted Duck. But both of them bringing home a pretty solid time here in the tournament. A 105 for both of them. Okay, Kentiko having some Kentico. trouble with the wire. <laughs> Maybe not a 105. <laughs> All right, no, it is still a 105. Okay. All right, GG's to both runners. That was awesome. Yeah, very nice run. Giving himself a round of applause, a thumbs up. I like to see it. You know, it's never my favorite thing as a you know tournament organizer, or tournament commentator. When uh, you see run runners, sometimes they'll have not their literal best run they've ever done, and then they start beating themselves up in the post game interview, saying that it was such a horrible run. I mean, you can't expect to play your best run in a tournament setting. It's just not going to happen. Definitely not. No. With that first match of the Group A is done. We got Twisted Duck sitting at 1-0 at the top of the group, and Kentikyo at the bottom. That's got Nishado and Switchrunner in this group. Should be pretty interesting. Switchrunner coming in from the qualifiers. Should be a nice, interesting dynamic in this group. We'll see if he's able to upset anyone. For now, we'll see Definitely. if we can get anybody nope. in here for an interview. Go ahead, what were you saying? Oh, no, uh, def I was saying definitely excited to see, you know, how, how far Duck is going to go. You know, being the first seed in, you know, Group B, see if he's going to take the win or if someone else is going to bop him out of this tournament. You know, I'm definitely excited to see you runners like Switch Runner see what he's able to do coming out of the qualifiers getting into groups so it's gonna be really excited to watch things as well yeah as far as i'm concerned i mean twist duck has to win the whole tournament or else uh you know i'm a bit disappointed but oh hey look it's duck in the, in hey, the call. Duck. hey duck how's it going how's Hello. your race hey gg um i i got a bit too confident with my lead at the end i was going for like some style style strats and then karma just hit <laughs> but at least i didn't lose hey yeah, welcome in. You're welcome, Kentico. welcome. GG. Thanks, thanks. You just did this attack. Yeah. Thank you. Nice run for you. Yeah. GG to you too. It was kind of an interesting dynamic. I mean, Kentiko, you obviously had a bit of errors in the beginning of the match, whereas Duck had more of his errors toward the end. But it was pretty fun to see, you know, the race come down pretty close near yeah. the end. Two back to back um, yeah, close was, races. Yeah, exactly. I was on 101 pace out of, um, I was on 101 pace into luncheon and then it just fell apart. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, did, I did a bad start, uh, just with, with, with Ed when I uh, I died, uh, just before the FRS. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, I my mind my mindset was, okay, I just concentrate myself and yeah i try to to make a good run like uh, i know to play and uh, yes i gold met metro day and snow <laughs> i was oh my god what i what did i do yeah and yeah at the end uh, the the deck yes uh, it was i uh, have to say yeah i was uh, we were was very close but yeah it was for you yeah i was yeah, definitely, definitely saying pretty close I was yep. saying in the early game, like, I really hope that, you know, those early game mistakes don't kind of spiral out of control. Because you see that a lot of times where people make mistakes at the beginning of the run, and then all of a sudden they're making mistakes throughout the run. But golding two of the kingdoms and playing a pretty solid yeah. second half, it's good to see. Uh, Duck, Thanks. Yes. going up 1-0 and in the group, uh, how are you feeling about the rest of the matches here in the group stage? Is there anybody you're playing against that uh, you're afraid of? Well, I don't in Shadow isn't consistent at all, so... <laughs> Wow. Um, no, okay. no, no, like, no, like, it's not, I know, it, like, it's true, like, I think his best no reset is, like, a 107, so, I think I'll be fine. And then Switch Runner has a 110, so, um, 
uh, I think I'll be fine for both of them because I'm pretty consistent because that end was just terrible. But I'm pretty consistent. I can consistently get 102s in races. How, so. can you, how can you say that Jado's best no reset is a 107 when Jado's well, no, TD best is no a 103 reset, like, the tourney. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, doesn't a, doesn't a PB count as a no reset? Like, what's what's the grounds here? Yeah. Yeah. When, uh, when my friend in vocal with me uh, talked me that, I was, okay, I just ruled <laughs> when you were on PB pace. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. A one, getting a 101 in, in any of these races would be nuts. I mean, if we yeah. if we get any 101s in the B tournament, I mean, might have to make um, the A tournament bigger, bigger next year. <laughs> yeah, I could I could honestly probably do that because I'm nearing sob hour. I have like a 10 10012 sob, some of the best. So I could t maybe get a 101 in a race if I play well. But here. Go ahead, little potato. Sorry, I'm, I keep. No, no, up. you're good. No, you're good. Can I do? I was just gonna start like talking about other stuff. So, floor is yours. Yeah. No, uh, I was just saying you love to hear it. You know, you love to hear the confidence coming from Duck. I'd love to see, you know, even a a, a sub one from Duck would be pretty, really pretty excited to see. Wait, yeah, I'm not quitting this game until I get sub hour. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't quit. You shouldn't quit oh, just because you get you. Well, I'm not gonna quit again. I might like do any percent less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get it soon, don't worry. Like not as much. Yeah, you'll run so I Yeah. Sub hours is just all I want. All right. Well, that was the last the end, yeah. last race for today. Uh, were either of you racers planning on continuing stream or I'm trying to find a raid target here? <laughs> Um, not a lot of gamers playing. I think we'll just find a random speedrunner if there are any. Does anybody know anybody? I don't know this person. Go to sub 115. That's not, that sounds like a good target. That sounds like a good target. Yeah. I'm gonna raid this guy. Yeah. But uh, appreciate everybody stopping by. Tomorrow we have some more tournament action. We got the Jack and Daxter no LTS quarterfinals starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, and then after that we have. I believe four matches. No, it's three matches? I don't know. We got a few matches, matches. in the B tournament. Uh, probably have a little bit of a break on Tuesday. Uh, but then after that, we're going to be having pretty much every day SMO. It's going to be crazy. There's a lot of matches. Like I said before, about 200 matches of SMO in the next month and a half. So definitely smack that follow button if you haven't already. Love SMO. And we will go check out Kibo's stream. So do stick around. Show some support to the community, and I appreciate everybody for being here. Thank you, racers, and Liptail for being on comms. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, pretty fun. Thank you. All right, GG. see you later, gamers. And yeah, let's see some.